Next, um, I am the first senior vice president at Siam Commercial Bank, which is um, for of you other towners, it's Thailand's oldest bank. And um, anyway, I, I run uh, what's called quantitative models and enterprise analytics unit, but now we kind of morph and merge into this big push into business intelligence. And so we do a lot of um, project based as well as, as uh, some kind of uh, methodology research. Um, this work here is, is, is based on uh, actually my, my earlier work, much earlier work, about six, seven years ago that I did for, uh, uh, when I was at the Bank of Thailand. Um, at that time, we were, we were just uh, uh, coming out from the global, well, Thailand was not terribly affected by the global financial crisis, but there was a lot of uh, awareness. Let's say the central banking community was woke to the idea that bank contagion was a very real risk. And uh, I was very keen to introduce a concept that uh, the way banks are related to one another, the way risks are spread, the way contagion happens and, and, and propagate throughout the system, is very much a network effect. So for that, you need a sort of graph theoretic type uh, 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 method to handle. But for, for the purpose of our, our talk and, I guess, of, of interest to you guys at large, it, it's, it's the idea that we are pretty much in a network economy now. So the data itself, how we are, how we interact with our friends, how we interact with our digital devices, how we interact with our financial service, it, it's very much a network-based modality. So for that, um, not only are we becoming nodes in the network that defines the economy, we are also generating a lot of network uh, type data. So let's play with that. Let, let's see what, what, what happens. So, so we're dealing with the fact that we, them, we ourselves are network-centric phenomena. We're becoming nodes in a network. Um, and so there's a lot of emergent property that happens when we interact as nodal entities as opposed to individual in a group. Okay. Now, in particular, the, the methodology and analytics I'm going to be introducing today is, is, is quite simple. Um, it's, it's based on what's called centrality analysis. And I'll be showing the standard graph theoretic uh, uh, measure of centrality vis-a-vis um, -vis degree centrality, closeness centrality, betweenness centrality, as well as eigenvector centrality. Uh, I'll explain a little bit of the concept as well as, well as my own work that extended um, Bonakic's eigenvector centrality into what I call um, entropic eigenvector centrality. And then I'll go into how we can implement this in, in, a, in, a, in a Python world. Uh, when I did this, uh, I think I, I did things in, in Mathematica. I still do a lot of things in Mathematica. But um, there's a great uh, GitHub library of, of Network X that implements a lot of algorithm, network uh, graph theoretic algorithms that we can be uh, benefiting from. Right, first of all, you guys seen this picture, um, right? This is the famous uh, Seven Bridges of Königsberg. König, of course, means king, Berg, actually means hill, not mountain. So it's a king of the hill or king hill thing. Uh, it was an old city uh, uh, of the Prussian Empire on the Baltic coast, now belongs to Russia, so it's part of Russian exclave. The idea was you have seven bridges here and you are a, a, a tourist, you want to travel, traverse one bridge without repeating and you want to cover all seven bridges. Now of course um, Leonard Euler saw this as nodes, I guess the representation on the top left if you can see. Okay, So the solution was very simple. It's not possible to do so. It's not possible to do so because in order to not repeat, you have to go to a landmass with connected by bridge with even number of bridges. If you have odd number of bridges, you can only have that at the beginning and at the end, since there are actually four, four landmasses with, with odd number edges. You can't traverse once without repeating yourself. Okay, so that's, that's a famous example, of course. And Euler, of course, is, is well, one of my personal heroes. So very happy to show this graph. Right. This is a very simple, simple type of a uh, uh, simple example. But what it does demonstrate is two things. One, the problem that you face in real life has a mathematical structure. 
And if you're good enough in math, you can see something happen. It is real life, social science, business, um, finance application, but you can recognize it as having a mathematical underpinning. Then you can translate into mathematical language, and then you can have something very trivial to solve in, in, in mathematics. Okay. And the second thing, of course, is that when you, do, when you find solution, a lot of time it's about properties of the mathematical structure. Sometimes you need algorithm. Okay. In this case, you only need to check some properties, but I'm going to be showing examples that require some algorithm, hence some Python program. Right. Again, this is based on my old, old, old work uh, I did for the central bank, but um, I can come back to this. But basically, it's the idea that uh, there are three levels of, of network analysis. Okay. If you have time, uh, if you have time, we'll come back to this, and, and also in, in, in QA, if you're interested in the what I mean by three levels of, of network theoretic analysis. Um, let me skip over that. Right. Just a little bit of background, just so that we're on the same page. A graph in mathematics is not Excel graph. In mathematics, it means nodes, meaning entities, whatever you use to call uh, to model your, your, your system entities, and connection between them. Okay? And there are certain properties about, about connectivity that makes uh, for a very interesting problem in pure mathematics as well as in, in applied uh, business situation. Right. The definition we're using is that graph is a collection of nodes, sometimes called vertices, with arcs, sometimes called edges. Okay? So, if I have, if I'm a person, you are a person, you are people, if I have this guy's phone number, that's one connection. He has somebody else's phone number, that's another connection. If I have that person's direct uh, uh, number on my iPhone, that's also a direct connection. But if I don't have, if I can't call this person, I have to call this guy to ask for the phone number of that guy. That means I'm you know, once removed. So that's the nature of connectivity we're talking about. Right. So, again, um, I probably don't have to do a lot of motivating for you guys to realize that, that, that we are surrounded and we are ourselves defining network phenomena. But uh, what I'd like to do is, is, is highlight two more things that, that, that people may not, may not notice. I work in, in a bank, and uh, uh, a lot of times we are interested in very simple, um, I guess, features about our clients. But a lot of our features, say our, our potential borrowers, age, income level, and all that, those are scale of quantity. Those are something that are, that are localized to the person. But what about our potential client or our potential borrower's connectivity. Those are sort of like network theoretic uh, 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 data. We can't exactly work with that directly. So part of what I'm doing here is mapping the network structured data that models relationship between people into individual and localized information. Okay, so that, that's, that's another motivation that, that may not get uh, uh, promoted in, in, in in this kind of uh, network where uh, uh, data science this community. Another is the fact that this is you know, related everywhere to, to other areas. For example, some of you guys may have been working with, with uh, uh, a graph database, GraphDB, Neo4j. That, that's a type of thing. Um, a lot of you, if not working in data science, may come from optimization, logistic, that uh, operational management and so forth, and that has to do with network optimization. And my favorite, which uh, I'm going to come back to only if I have uh, time, is the idea of computation graph, which is something I'm very keen on working with, especially with uh, 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 in Python world, that would be PyTorch, and also in, in Mathematica, which is, which is my world. Right. Okay, so these are examples of network phenomena. Okay, let's start with Hollywood factors. What's your Kevin Bacon number? Anybody knows what that is? I'll come back to that, but, but uh, we'll, show, we'll show how to compute that in, in, uh, in, in Python. Uh, social network. You have groups of friends, and you want to start a rumor, hopefully a very benign, not malicious gossip. If you have only one phone call, or one, one person, okay? You don't want to be a, a gossipy type, but you want to spread some rumor. Okay? So you only, quote-unquote, 
confide in one person. Who is that guy? You know what I mean? You, you give, say, okay, l- let me tell you something, strictly in secret. But you know, once you hit this guy, it spreads everywhere. Who's the most efficient intra-network spreader of gossip? Okay, who's that one guy? What about cities? Cities have uh, interconnection, airports, and so forth. What would make a good airport hubs? Right? What would make a good transportation hubs? How about bank accounts? If we have relationship between banking accounts, you know, money flows between account A to B, C, D, and so forth, can we consolidate all this information and then say, well, wait a minute, this guy looks like a money launderer. Okay? So there is a pattern in the, in the interconnectivity between the account flows. Again, and, and financial institution, that's the contagion risk. That's the one that I was motivated to start into this, this investigation area back, I guess, 2006, I think. Okay. But the papers that was published, I think it was in, in 2010. And also, again, with e- economies, Eastern blocks, who makes a good, good, important key players? I want to crack the Eastern block market. Really? Is it here, there, uh, ASEAN market, Thailand, really? Or you know, so forth. So who has the most leverage vis-a-vis the global trading network? So all these are questions that, that are very practical, uh, except the first one, of course. Uh, but they all have very much a, a network theoretic underpinning. So you just have to recognize the mathematics. Right. Um, this is sort of a, for, for the programmers, I want to show that there is a pipeline to it. Um, data to the graph and the matrix handling and to the analysis. Sometimes I would go to the graph first, sometimes I come down to matrix, but you know, this is sort of like a, a pipeline of, 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 of the talk. Now, the first example is this. The first example is, is called adjacency, right? Adjacency, okay, wait a minute. Let me check, that's right, okay. Right, what's adjacency, okay? The data itself exists as connections. Okay? There's nothing further. Uh, in, in my case, the adjacency is between Bangkok Metro District. Okay? We have about I think, 30 districts, 50, yeah, let's say 50, 50 districts. There is no further information about the district. Only the connection matters. By connection, I mean who is adjacent to whom. Okay? That's all. That's all I'm doing. And this here is basically, if you see the top left corner, those are the 50 uh, Bangkok Greater Metropolis uh, districts. And the matrix here basically is who is adjacent to whom. That's it. So it's a matrix of zero and ones. Okay, it's a Boolean. Right. Now, let's, well, we can do this in, in Python, I guess. It's, uh, it's uh, nicer. Right. Where's my code? Okay, let's go to example one. And this is, this is a very simple case. It's so simple that um, it, a lot of it is one liner. If you see the, the, the top headers, there is a line import network X as NX. That's the GitHub uh, repository that I was talking about. Uh, it has all the very extensive library of network computation. So graph computation, uh, in network X is wonderful. It, it's, um, so let me load that, take some time. Okay, fine. Now, this is the adjacency list. Uh, I'm not a very good Python programmer. If somebody can tell me how to control matplotlib so that I pre- enter twice and it shows the same drawing, let me know. I don't, I don't know how to do that. But basically, you can see that this is the connectivity, right? Um, where are we? We are somewhere. Oh, Watana, that's where I live, right? Watana is connected, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So this kind of preserves a little bit of the topology of Bangkok. But it's not, it's not geographical topology, but it's graph theoretic topology. Right. So let's ask some question. Let's ask some question. Okay? Now, I, I have, uh, I'm just going to run the numbers and, and show you what, what, what they come up with. Centrality means this. You have n nodes, and there are n times n minus 1 uh, combination of uh, 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 arcs between different nodes. Right? Based on that, 
who is the most quote unquote central. Now, if the network is like a star, there's one central node and there are five, ten guys surrounding me, and none of them are connected to uh, uh, each other, they only connect. Certainly, the center stage. I'm the center of everything. Okay, so my centrality is higher than everybody else. Okay, so if there's one district that somehow is connected to every other district, but those two other, any two other districts are not connected, obviously this this district is very important, right? So that's the central district. This is the concept of centrality analysis. Now, obviously, there's no such thing, right? It's sort of like a web rather than a star. So it becomes the relative measure of, quote unquote, centrality or importance. Now, that centrality depends on the metric. And depending on which metric, you get different centrality measure. So let's start with um, okay. this one. This is very simple. This is called centrality. It simply counts how many connections you've got. So obviously, this guy. Jatujap is connected to nine other, guy, uh, other districts, so whereas uh, Bangna isn't. So that's, that's simple, that's obvious, right? You're just counting. You can do this with, with, with pandas, right? So you don't need uh, network X for it. Now this is more interesting. This is called closeness. Closeness is sort of like average distance of a shortest path. So, so if you want to, um, let's say, well, well, you guys can become you, you guys can become my district, right? You guys can become, and between you, there are distance, okay? Now, to get from that guy, this guy to that guy, you can take the long way path, or you can take the shortest path, right? Well, on average, if you consider all the combination of paths and takes all the shortest paths, how often does that involve him, right? In other words, this guy is so central. All the, cent all the shortest path comes through me or to him, then he is more central. Whereas the cent uh, shortest path rarely involves that guy over there. So that guy is certainly not central. This is the closeness centrality. Okay? And it gives uh, this it. This it. It's very, very closeness central. Now, this is a lot more interesting. This is the gossip. This is the idea of the gossip. Gossip means just connection. To get from here to there, I have to pass to somebody. Okay, this kind of thing. So this kind of betweenness, uh, centrality, was the example I was, I was referring to earlier. It, it's sort of like it's, it's the critical mass. You can imagine this, yeah? If you have um, groups of friends, groups of friends, lots of friends, right? 100 people, they're all fully connected. And a group of friends, 100 more, who is perfectly, completely, fully connected, then you have two guys who know each other, right? These two guys will have the highest between their centrality because through this guy links everybody else. Now, once you get there, it's all linked. So nobody there is important because everybody is just as important, right? So based on this criteria, who is important? This is it again, followed by Jetu Jack. Now, the last one is what I want to talk about, which is very rich in analysis. The ranking turns out to be the same. In this case, Dusit and Jatucha. But this is called eigenvector centrality. And it takes some explaining. So I'm going to go back to the slide. Ship, 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 ship. OK, right? I meant to go to the next page, not turn it off, all right? So that, uh, we skip that, okay. And by the way, this is the code. It's very easy. Um, you import uh, network X as NX, and uh, you can create a graph from, from a list of names that are connected, and then you can run this analysis called nx.eigenvector centralities. Okay, simple as that. Right. Now, um, Okay, I'm going to be explaining the concept of eigenvector centrality because that, that's quite important. But before I do that, let me go to the next example. Okay? 
Um, anybody plays Overwatch? You, you can admit it. it. It's not unprofessional to, to play games. I don't, but uh, that's because I'm, I'm not very good. Okay. There's actually, believe it or not, on the internet, an Overwatch character strength. That means who beats whom, right? This kind of who beats whom is encoded as a graph. But, but, it is directed graph. Meaning it's not symmetric. It's not like adjacency, okay? So this guy is not connected to that guy. It's not next to that guy. But this guy beats that guy whenever they beat with, uh, uh, combat. So that's the, the Overwatch um, character. Now, here's an interesting thing. And this is where you run into a little bit of limitation of NX, uh, uh, Network X, right? So... See that? All right. Now, I just didn't bother to reading. So, as you can see here, oops, I have to what, un, okay. right, okay. So you can see here, these are all the characters, right? I don't know who this guy, McCree, Junkrat, McCree, Faran, Soldier 76, Genji, and so forth. Now, these are pairwise. The difference again, is that it is directed, it's not symmetric. Not only that, there's a weight to it. Because you can, if you think about it, you can have not just beating or not beating, but you can have sort of like even, right? So you can add different weight. In this case, for example, I can say, if this guy loses to another guy, I give a weight of one. Because that's you know, just basic performance. If it's even, I give a weight of 10. If this guy beats another guy, I give a weight of 100. And this is fairly arbitrary, but it, it's, it is ordinal scale. Okay? So we have all this Reaper, Symmetra. In this case, presumably Symmetra and Reaper are kind of even out, whereas Diva tends to beat Soldier 76. Right? Problem is, when I try to do this, okay? Again, I, I'm not going to talk about eigenvector centrality yet, but when I, I try to do this with... with um, Network X, I don't get anything. Okay? I don't get anything because Network X only perform eigenvector centrality for adjacency. In other words, it doesn't take into account any kind of weighting. So everybody is connected to everybody because at some point they come back. Right? So in this case, this is a top. Then what I would do is I would have to write my own code. But that's not very difficult because... My code, that's the output, by the way. Let, let me just show you the output. If you want to play, apparently become Tracer is good. Okay? That's my, that's my, that's my recommendation today. If you're not, you have to go on, online to play Network, uh, Overwatch. Uh, take Tracer as your character. Okay? Lucio. Nah, that, that, that guy's a loser. Top John, no way. Mercy. So, you know, Winston's good. Zentaya is Is that right? Zen, Zen Sinjata. Okay. Right. So this is basically the code. The code, I, use, I put it as QMEA's own network X extension. Basically, the bit that does all the dirty work is right here, which is to extract principal eigenvector. And it's based on NumPy library. NumPy can actually take a matrix and compute what's called eigenvector eigenvalue decomposition, and I use that. Okay? I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. Right. Now, finally, finally, and this is where I'm not going to be able to avoid um, telling you the whole story of eigenvector centrality. Okay. Right. Um, I'll come back to this academic paper that, 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 that uh, I presented at the conference about, uh, it's a lot more serious than, than Overwatch, obviously. It's the interconnectivity between Thai banking system, right? And we do some... Yeah. So basically, um, to give you a long story short, this is the, the concept of eigenvector centrality, but weighted eigenvector centrality. What it means is this. If I beat, if I, if I beat the person, Okay, like, you know, uh, Overwatch. 
Does it matter that I beat more people? Or does it matter that I beat more of the good people, of the strong guys, right? So I have to beat people or, or competitor who are themselves very strong. Now, how do I know who's strong? I say, that guy is strong because he beats other strong competitor. Well, how do we know what those strong people are? They're strong because they beat other strong player. So it becomes a recursive equation. This kind of recursive equation, well, you, you might think we can use a uh, recursive loop within, within, uh, in Lambda calculus or in, in, in Python. But actually, because it has a closed form solution, all you do is what's called eigenvector, eigenvalue decomposition. Okay? So, I am nice because I'm nice to nice people. Why are those people nice? Because they're nice to nice people. Why are they nice? They are nice because they're nice to nice people. This kind of recursive equation, okay? And you can, roughly speaking, this is what we came up with. These are all the banks at that time. You can't see them, that's good. Based on size alone, this guy is very important, okay? That's the distribution of importance in the banking industry. But based on connectivity, it turns out the fifth one from the left which is kind of like medium-sized type thing. It's actually a lot more interconnected. Okay, that's, that's, that's the solution. Right. Okay, so the way we work here, okay, the way we work here, I'm going to show you um, what's called eigenvector centrality. But I'm going to make it a little bit more interesting because I want to showcase that you can't do everything with, with network X. Sometimes you have to do your own tweaking and your own, your own intermediate step. And this is what I'm talking about. Anybody knows what a Kevin-Bacon number is? Okay. Well, mathematician would not know Kevin-Bacon, but would certainly know Erdosh. Okay. Basically, it's this. I have a Kevin-Bacon Kevin Baker number of one. If I star in the same movie, I'm a co-actor. Okay. But if I never acted with Kevin-Bacon, but I acted with co who is a co-star co with Kevin Bacon in some movie. I have a Kevin Bacon number of two. Now, the closed world phenomena is a philosophy that, <laughs> to be rude, Hollywood is an inbred society. So everybody's connected. All the actresses have Kevin Bacon number of no higher than six. Okay, no higher than six. That's, that's the thesis, right? Anyway. Oh, anybody knows who that is? That's right. Graboid. Okay. What is his Kevin Bacon number? His Kevin Bacon number is one. A lot of you are staring blank because you weren't born when this movie came out, presumably. It is Tremor, right? This guy co-starred with Kevin Bacon, so he has a Kevin Bacon number of one. Okay. In fact, I don't know if we have the internet here, but uh, you can certainly go online on this uh, thing, oracleofbacon.org, and you can type in any star's name and it would impute the Kevin Bacon number. Now, Kevin Bacon number for this guy is obvious because they're co-star. This is a database we, we took. Now, before I, before I go to the Kevin Bacon relationship, you have to realize this is an example of what's called bipartite graph, meaning there's connection, yes, but there are two types of nodes. One type is called actors, one type is called movies, right? And actors are not directly connected to actors. Movies are not directly uh, connected to movies, but actors are connected to movies. So how do I get actor-to-actor -actor connection? From calculating the Kevin Bacon number, which is induced from this bipartite graph. So, I have actors on one side, movie on the other, and I have to say, this guy in this movie acts with that guy. Who in this movie acts with Kevin Bacon? Aha, Kevin Bacon number is two. Right? So we have to do is so network X as a Python library is very good. It does offer a lot of rich computation vis-a-vis -vis bipartite graph. It does a lot of rich computation vis-a-vis -vis fully connected, undirected graph. But to get from bipartite graph to matrix of Bacon num Kevin Bacon numbers, 
uh, we did it ourselves. And that's the bit we did here. By the way, you can see this, uh, this is an example. Toy Story links Tim Allen, is that right? Tim Allen's Tom Hanks and Jim Carney, right? And Tom Hanks, of course, stars in a lot of movies, so there are plenty more. Okay, there are plenty more. Good. Now, this is the bit of the code. This is a basically bigger database. Now, as you can see, there are some islands, meaning it's not fully connected. So if it's not fully connected, the actors in this node, in this cluster, and actors in that cluster would have, by definition, Kevin number, Kevin Bacon number of infinity. Okay? I'm using Kevin Bacon generically. That's between any, any two actors. Um, our database actually looks like a bit like this. <laughs> now, you can't see what's going on here. But it turns out that, well, uh, and this is probably not the full database. There's one massive connectivity over here, and there are a few smaller clusters. Okay? So it's not true that everybody's connected to everybody, at least in this database, which is uh, probably not, not, not comprehensive. But there are some actors who are not connected to other actors through movies. Okay? Right. Now, let's see the code. Basically, this is the bit that we did. It's very simple. It's called um, like the QMEA extension. Uh, it's called bipartite graph to Erdos number, etc. I like to write long name because I have short memory, so I can remind myself what, what, what I do. Basically, it just instantiates all the nodes, okay, from one side. So I have a graph that's built with network X, right? Then I have a list of nodes that I consider my interest. And, and it has to be either one side or the other, either actors or movies. In this case, actors. So I feed in those lists. And for each list of, of actors, I go to other actors and find the shortest path, right? So it's like closeness centrality, okay? So once I get that, I call it the Erdos number or, or Kevin Bacon number. Now, I want to do further analysis. I want to say who is the most quote unquote central actors in Hollywood? Okay, by the way, at this point, um, anybody wants to take a bet? Huh? Well, not, uh, Kevin Bacon is very high, but not him. Not him. As a guy more, I guess, a promiscuous, actors, everybody. Tom Hanks is very high. Ah, one more bit, one more guess, one more guess. It's a guy, it's a, it's a man. One more guess. Samuel Jackson, he also is very high, but I'll show you who is. Okay. See? So, done. So you can't go back and say we haven't learned new things today. Certainly have. Okay. Now, let's run this. Now, in this case, I'm running a reduced sample. Okay. Oops, sorry. Uh, number three, right? Okay, that's it. That's, a, that's my third name demo. Yeah. I, the graph, I use Pickle from my, uh, 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 my, my team, who's very keen on Python programming. It's a very elegant way of doing uh, this. Now, for this demonstration, I reduce to just um, sample size of, um, I think, 1,500? Yeah, 1,500 nodes. Now, the idea is, well, let's look at the 1,500 nodes. Okay? Let's run a while. Yeah, let it run a while. Run a while. Okay. There. You can't see what's going on. Now, to do eigenvector centrality analysis, I have to do just amongst the connected. So you can see that there are two islands. There's a big island, there's a small island, right? So basically, we have to get the one with the highest number. We have to play with that one. So the sheet here is to say, um, 
I go with the largest one, and the largest one is shown here. Come on, come on, come on. There. Yeah. That's the largest um, uh, within my, my data sample set of connectivities. Now, you can't see, but in there, there are both actors and movies. Okay? So it's not sorted out yet. And then that's a smaller one. Apparently, this is a fringe, artsy, fartsy team, you know, across, across the self of time. Have you seen it? Okay, acted by four movies, actors, who's not related to anyone. Okay. Right. Now, this graph, okay, my, also my colleagues, then separate into movies and actors. Okay, movies on one side, actors on the other. And then run this algorithm. Okay, run this algorithm to find out who's um, the, the, the Erdos number. Now, centrality is kind of inverse of Erdos. What it means is that the guy who is most important is the one with the most Baker number of ones, basically. Right? So I invert the number. If you have Baker number of five, the numbers I'm going to be using is one over five. So that matrix of Erd inverse Erdos number is what I'm going to do my centrality analysis with. Okay. Oh, okay. I just gave the answer away. Robert De Niro. And just, just to be mean, well, not mean, but to be, to be critical or to be insightful, that's the eigenvector centrality of all the, I don't know, thousand movie actors. Okay? I can't see Samuel J. Jackson, Tom Hanks, these are guys over there. Let me read from the top. Robert De Niro, Sean Penn, Ed Harris, Michelle Pfeiffer, Michael Douglas, Danny DeVito. Right. But you can see this guy stands out. Now, I play around with another thing called, um, I think, closeness, betweenness. And in this case, Robert De Niro is even higher. Okay? So that's, that's basically the algorithm. Now, um, there's some mathematics behind how we work with eigenvector centrality. We won't go into that because I don't think uh, it's of interest or, or worth the time. So let's go with um, the conclusion. Let me see. Right? So this is basically what we did. Now, this is based on adjacency. Based on adjacency, without the Erdos number, Robert De Niro kills everyone. Okay? But when you take into account the Erdos number, he's still the top. Okay? So, so that's it. The idea here is, is that you have problems. You want to get a good handle on it. Before you do even kind of analysis, you have to recognize the mathematical structure. Once you recognize the mathematical structure is a graph entity, is a graph object, then all the mathematical operations, properties, things that we spend years with in, in graduate school uh, coming up with, they become immediately applicable. In this case, we use the concept of eigenvector or eigenvector centrality, in turn, is derived from eigenvalue decomposition, which I think is, is, is um, uh, second year linear algebra for, for a lot of us. So it's not that advanced mathematics, right? It's about solving the determinant equation of a, of a square matrix, a invertible matrix. And so that's, that, that's pretty much it. Now, I, I'm going, my talk is pretty much finished, but that's, 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 that I want you to get the, the feeling that, yes, Python has a lot of rich tools. You go to them. But you shouldn't go to them first. You should recognize what the mathematical structure or underpinning of your problem is. Then you can go Google search or GitHub search. In this case, we found that there's a rich library in, in what's called Network X. But even that is not, does not cover all the application. It has all the components. But for example, if I want to translate adjacency into Erdos number, I have to do it myself still relying on the algorithm within network X. Okay? So I'm really advocating data science as a proper science. I would like to, you know, my parting thought is that 
you shouldn't just throw data and method and go to GitHub to see what everybody else has done. You should think of it mathematically, scientifically, analytically first, right? And, um, and by the way, let me just you know, take one minute. Yes, we are hiring. We, we, are, we, are, we are desperate for, for a lot, okay? Have to build up to about 100 data science. So please, if you are even in the least bit interested or have friends or have relatives and cousins and whatnot, and please come, come to us, okay? Just email me, okay? It's my first name, dot last name, at scb.co.th, right? So really, we are... That's great. <laughs> so please, um, any Q&A? Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, so any guys have, anyone has question or want to go back? Yes, sir. Uh, 